If you're crafting a roulette betting system, you need to know what really works and what are common gambling myths. Let's talk about the six most prevalent roulette gambling myths today on Jack Ace. What up donkeys, Jack Hayes here with jackhayes.com where I talk about my three favorite topics, gambling, crypto, and STEM. And today I'm gonna cover six of the most common gambling myths that many punters believe. And it's really important to understand why these myths are false because a lot of them are counterintuitive. And if you believe the opposite of what is actually true, it can cost you hundreds or even thousands of dollars if you're trying to flip the odds against the house. And if you have a roulette system that depends on any of these gambling myths, I can assure you that I'm gonna give your system a bad rating. Probably the most common gambling myth is believing that a number or bet is due. Let me get this straight. You took all the money you made franchising your name and bet it against the Harlem Globetrotters? Uh, I thought the generals were due! This happens a lot with roulette, baccarat, and craps where you can bet on both sides of the same bet. With roulette, you can bet on red or black, odd or even, and top or bottom half. With baccarat, you can bet on banker or player. And with craps, you can bet on pass and come, or you can bet on the dark side. Whenever you have the ability to bet on two sides of a coin, people try to find a way to predict which bet is better at the moment by looking at the past. They'll look at a long streak of black numbers in roulette and decide that it's now time for red to hit. Or they'll see five banker bets win in a row in baccarat and decide that player is now the best bet. But in games where the past has little to nothing to do with the future, looking at streaks has nothing to do with what happens next. On any given roulette spin, you only have an 18 out of 37 chance of hitting your even money bet, assuming a single zero will. And in craps, you're a 25 to 24 dog to win your pass line bet. And regardless of what happened in the last 10 bets, your odds remain the same. The roulette ball doesn't remember that it just landed on red 10 times in a row. And the craps dice don't remember that it just made the last five points. And with Baccarat, the banker player needle moves, but very, very little. And it's based on the cards that were removed, not necessarily who won the last few hands. If you find yourself betting the farm on black because you just witnessed 10 reds in a row, be aware that there's over a 50% chance of losing your farm. Along these same lines, a lot of misled gamblers believe they can outsmart fate by jumping in on a streak that's already in progress. So let's say they have $10,230 in their bankroll and they want to win $10. So they bet that $10 on black, and if the bet loses, they bet 20, and then 40, and then 80, 160, 320, 640, and so on. Eventually, the wheel will hit black, so they're gonna win, right? Well, they're gonna lose everything if red hits 10 times in a row. This is known as the Martingale system, where you double up on every loss, and when you finally hit, all your losses will be erased, and you'll end up one unit ahead. And if you wanna see more details about this system, check out this other video I've made about the pros and cons of this strategy. Mostly cons, by the way. So anyway, these geniuses decide they're not just gonna jump in at a table that just hit black. Instead, they decide to wait until they see three red in a row before starting their betting progression. So now in order for them to lose their entire bankroll, the wheel has to hit 13 reds in a row. Surely you're a lot less likely to lose if you're dependent on the wheel hitting red 13 times in a row instead of 10 times, right? No, God, please, no, no! The problem with this logic is that these people have never heard of conditional probabilities. The probability of getting 13 reds in a row, given that there has already been three reds in a row, is exactly the probability of getting 10 reds in a row. Waiting for those three reds in a row to come up has done nothing to improve your odds of avoiding those additional 10 reds. And you can postpone your bet until you've seen five or 10 or even 20 reds. It won't matter. Your odds of getting completely wiped out are always gonna be the same. The best way I can explain this phenomenon is by comparing it to the TV show Severance. If you haven't seen this show yet, it's an excellent sci-fi show with one of the greatest animated TV intros of all time where characters are able to split their brain into two completely severed banks of memories. In the show, they go through this process because their employer doesn't want the employees to have any knowledge of their highly sensitive job when off the clock. So when their work brain punches out of work on Friday evening, their next immediate experience is clocking into work on Monday morning. There's absolutely no memory of any relaxing moments they may have experienced over the weekend. Sounds like a pretty horrible existence, right? And just like the work slaves in Severance, the roulette ball and the craps dice have absolutely no memory of the past winning bets. Although it is true that you will lose less money if you wait for three reds, but that's only because you're gonna be spending most of your time just waiting for an opportunity to start your betting progression. I also see a lot of people bet on zero and double zero because they think it's some magical number that comes up more often to spoil the fun. But the reality is there's really nothing special about the zeros that make them more prone to being hit. The only reason why you notice them even being hit is because they're often a spoiler number. 5,000. Black. 5,000. Red. 
Zero? <laughs> zero! Okay. Wait, is that red zero or black zero? The green zero. I'm afraid you lose, messieurs. The numbers are rarely bet on, so when they hit, you often hear the entire table groan in unison. Because the zeros are always noticed when they hit, it's easy to remember when they do. It's easy to recall if zero has come up in the last 20 spins or so, but could you tell me if a random number like 31 has hit? People often associate the green numbers with pain. And what's the best way to address that pain? By putting a few bucks on green, of course. On YouTube, there's a channel called Roulette Strategy Pro. And if you look at all of his thumbnails, nearly every one has zero covered. But if you're playing on a single zero wheel, you'll find that zero hits around once every 37 spins. And if you're playing double zero, you'll find that zero or double zero hits about twice every 38 spins. And if you're playing triple zero, you'll find that you've made poor life choices. Another popular betting system tactic is the hit and run strategy. Whenever I hear the phrase hit and run attached to a gambling system, my first reaction to the system author is to ask why. Why do you have to stop? What exactly are you trying to avoid? If your system works so well, why can't it stand up to the test of time? Systems are often called hit and run when they have a high probability of winning a small amount and a lower chance of catastrophic failure. So the purpose of trying to cut your session short is to avoid the inevitable long run that will eventually wipe you out. So yes, applying a hit and run strategy to your system may significantly improve your odds of walking away a small winner. But if you were to use this strategy many times, you'd eventually hit that catastrophic or even existential event. Trying to employ a hit and run strategy is basically trying to avoid the long run. Because if a system were truly a winning system, then it shouldn't depend on you having to pick the right time to leave. When you jump in and out of the action, you're basically rejoining the long run just like the employees of Severance rejoin their work shift every Monday morning. You're just hoping that your brain doesn't remember that time you got completely wiped out because you've separated it with a large time gap. Another tactic is to bet sectors of the wheel in roulette. For some reason, some players think they will get bigger bang for their buck if they bet on a continuous sector of the wheel as opposed to disjointed sectors covering the same sized area. Now, I'm not doubting that there are biased wheels out there that perhaps disproportionately favor the ball landing on a certain sector, but I've seen quite a few systems out there that arbitrarily make a number the epicenter of their betting pattern with no evidence of bias at all. Why would you assume that a wheel that you've never watched before is gonna favor one sector over another? Even if you had full access to the wheel for hours, you probably couldn't make that determination. You'd need a sample size of thousands of spins to come to this conclusion. There's no way you could come to any kind of hard conclusion from just a dozen spins while watching from the casino floor. And there are many people who insist that some roulette croupiers have the ability to target certain sectors of the wheel by keeping the wheel rotation and ball release point consistent. And personally, I think that's just a load of crap. And again, this is usually based on a tiny sample size and anecdotal evidence. There's a reason why the ball spins in one direction and the ball revolves in the other. And there's a reason why those diamond frets exist on the outer rim of the wheel. They exist to provide enough randomness to ensure a result free of bias. And even if a dealer could target a sector of the wheel, what makes you think they would want to help you anyway? My mom says I'm cool. And one of the most ridiculous things I've heard is that computers aren't sufficiently random. I've heard from several people who claim they can beat the casino, but their claims can't be proven by computer simulation because they don't model the real world mechanics of a physical roulette wheel. They'll even watch hours of live roulette video so they can test their system against dozens of live spins instead of millions of computer simulated spins. And this is ridiculous because their claim is always based on nothing but gut feelings. There's a general spirit of anti-intellectualism lately where people believe scientists who study the climate are not qualified to tell you what's happening with the climate. And doctors who study infectious diseases aren't qualified to tell you how infectious diseases spread. So of course computer engineers and mathematicians can't be trusted to mimic randomness. And to me, flippantly making the claim that computers aren't sufficiently random is the equivalent of shouting fake news whenever you hear something you don't like. But to these skeptics, I ask, what is your criteria based on? Is there data to support your claim? And if there were detectable bias in computer randomness, why couldn't we exploit it in an ETG game? For most of these people, the answer is that the computer is not telling them what their gut is saying. For those reasons, come out. So the TLDR summary of this video is that you can't escape the long run. You can try to fool your brain by waiting extended periods of time between bets, but if you just consolidate all of your gambling time, you're gonna find that your results converge towards the house edge, as one would expect. Saying that you can beat the casino because you won in a short session is like claiming you beat the insurance company by skipping a month of coverage. You might be able to get away with it once, but when the cost of being wrong is devastating, then you're taking on an extraordinary amount of risk that can't be ignored. Do you believe anything I said wasn't a myth? 
Are there any big myths that I forgot? Let me know in the comments below. And if you learned anything, don't forget to like and subscribe. Always gamble responsibly, never play triple zero roulette, and peace out, donkeys.